hello guys welcome to my second video on delta life tables in the previous video i have explained the basics of delta life tables and how how do we create an etl pipelines in the delta life tables and what kind of tables we can create using the delta life tables now in this video i'll be explaining on how we can do cdc in delta life table in this video we'll be discussing on how delta life tables handle cdc using both the techniques scd1 and scd2 there won't be much difference in the syntax, mm, almost the same, but the, the, the way the target table has been uh, designed for SCD1 and SCD2 by the Delta Live tables uh, automatically will be deferred. That's it. So let's go ahead and let's first go through the code. This is a notebook which I have created. The first cell is for the SCD1. So let's first check this. Now here, if we go through the code, uh, I'm just importing the DLT. And I'm just reading the uh, Delta Life table, sorry, Delta table here. That's it. The Delta table name is CDC table. I have some dummy records in it. I'll show you that. And I'm creating a method and I've declared this decorator, which means the Delta Life table is going to create a view with the name CDC table. If you see my previous video, you'll get more, more clarity on it. I'll, I'll tag it. Uh, I'll pin that video as well here. So I'm just creating a new view named as cdc table which will act as my source and if you see this particular statement will create a target delta life table so it creates a streaming table uh, just like if you just call dlt dot create table and the name it creates a target table named uh, target scd1 and we have to uh, call apply changes method if you want to implement scd in delta life tables we have to call this apply method apply changes method so what we do here is like we are just declaring the target table name which we have created above and we are just creating a source table name this which is the view which we have created now and we are giving the key on which basis it should uh, delta uh, i mean it, the data brick should detect whether it's a change record or not we need to have one primary key to handle the scd to scd functionality right so based on the user id we are defining that and uh, how to order the data for suppose if i have uh, a data like uh, id and name uh, if, if only two columns uh, one praveen one chinna in that case i don't know what is the first record which what is the record which came first and what is the record which came second so just to handle this kind of scenarios we need to give uh, have one more audit kind of column which tells us which came first and which came second so in, in our scenario, we have a co column called uh, date call, which which holds the date value. So with which it decides which, which record came first and which record came second. And also along with that, it ha handles deletes as well. If this particular value is null, that means the record has been deleted in the source. That's how it assumes. That's the expression we have given. So if the date, date call value is null, that means it treats that record as deleted and marks the deleted in our target. And also if you don't want to add any column into our target, then we can give those column names as well. And for suppose if you have 10 columns in the source and if you want only five columns into our target, and if you don't want to take one column into target, then you can give that list of column names here. And I want a CD one functionality here. So I just gave a number equal to one. That's it. The, this code is almost similar uh, to a CD two as well. Just that the number comes to here, which we see next. So now let's go and create some dummy data. If you see here, I have a table called CDC table and I have some insert statements and if you uh, ask me to view the data if I view the data if you view the data I have just eight eight rows okay so now let me how to create the pipeline and all I have already created a video before but if you want just quickly we can just go to delta live tables and create a pipeline uh, i already have it when you click on create pipeline it comes to this page so even when you click on the settings button also it goes to the same page so i've just selected all the required options i have tagged that particular notebook cdc notebook uh, and i'm using unity catalog um, that's it everything is uh, common uh, that's it i don't want to save it and if I click on start, it starts as an in incremental or up and road. If I do full refresh, it starts from fresh. I mean, it, it truncates the existing target table and then it creates a new target table when you do full refresh. And if you if there was another option called validate over there. And if you click on validate, just validates everything. It runs the code 
but you don't create any targets target tables that's it 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 got uh, resources allocated it does all the compilation and now it's working on the tables creating the tables if you see this is our view which we have created from the source table and it's writing into the target table called target scd1 that's what we have given here target scd1 that's it now we can even go and query that table just the notebook has been ran and uh, we have eight rows inserted because our source also has only eight rows see that's it so guys now let's go and insert one more record with the same key so let's see how it works like how the scd has been it just overrides this particular record with the new record because that's what the scd one is so i'll just grab the scd one statement if you see one i just gave the name as chinna hyderabad and i'm just giving some incremental date here that's it because this is how it uh, orders the data based on the, because the sequence column is a date call here so it orders accordingly and now i have inserted uh, one more uh, row here so if i view the data if if i if i show you the data i with key one i have two rows in the source if you see this is my latest record and this has a higher date so it clearly it takes this as a latest record and now when it triggers the pipeline if i i don't want to do increment i, I don't want to do i don't want to do full refresh now i want to just do the normal uh, start because i want it to be an appended load now it incremental kind of load so so now let's once it is done we can go and query the data as well the table name is scd1 if you see it has one alias in new york so once the pipeline runs successfully it should have one chinna and hyderabad those kind of information one row is written we can clearly see there see that yes if you see one chinna scd1 has been clearly implemented and also if you observe guys it, we did not get the date column into target because because we have clearly mentioned exclude column list as date column so it will not come into our target mm. now let's go and see how the scd2 works now guys as we know in scd2 we maintain the history what is the previous record what is the next record every history is maintained and how do we maintain the history uh, ideally if you go to the real time projects it works based on the date column like Uh, let me grab an excel and show you so on day 1 this will be the data so both are active so we will just have nulls here on day 2 wow, in if you i mean if you want to store the history what happens is what happens is for suppose if you have got an update here for suppose the pravin has been changed from um, pravin to reddy in the source so what happens is we'll insert one more record saying ready and it will be closed and for suppose the date it, uh, we got the update is like uh, 112021 sorry 112021 so what happens is this value will come here and this will be null so it it treats these records as a uh, active record for maintaining the history here we are using the date columns but i have observed that databricks will not support date columns for maintaining the history it supports only integers that's what i have observed in case if they support uh, date columns in the future i will try to make another video and i'll pin it in the comments so that's why instead of date columns i have used a sequence column here okay the code is same we are just creating another delta life view here with the name cdc table and that will be our source and we are creating another uh, target uh, scd2 uh, um, we are we are creating another target target scd2 and the user id is a key and the sequence in the scd1 we have used date column uh, based on the date it is ordering it is uh, de deciding which is the first row which is the latest row which is the old row and all so here we have used the sequence column and we don't want sequence into our target so we have kept them and just we have changed the final value uh, which is nothing but we want it as a scd type 2 so let's go and create the dummy data first so i am just creating a table here and 
I am inserting some five rows here. And if I query this one, two, three, four, we have five rows, right? In the source. So we should get this five into our target. We don't want this column in the first run. Now let's go and trigger the pipeline. Let's do full refresh because I'm just uh, creating a new target table. So I want, it, this is my first time load. Let's do a full refresh because they, this is for a completely new table. The previous table was target SCD1. Now the table which we are creating is target SCD2. So let's do a full refresh of this pipeline. So guys, if you see, we have the five rows in the source. So the five rows have been written. So let's just go and query the table first. If you see the sequence number is coming under start at and end at is null completely here. That means all these rows, uh, all these rows are active rows. So the sequence number values are coming as started. Okay. Because why is sequence number values is coming as started? Because we have clearly mentioned the sequence by it should be taken from the sequence column. Okay. Now let's go and update. Uh, sorry, let's go and insert one more row here. For phi, I am giving as pravin, and I am the sequence should be incremental because the previous one is phi. If we can give any value greater than phi, you can give 10 or something, then only it thinks that this particular row which we are inserting is a new record and this is a old record. Otherwise, it, it treats this as a old record. If you give the lesser value, it treats this as a old record and this as a new record, which is not right. So I just inserted one more. So now if I come and query this table, I have uh, two rows with the highest sequence for the Praveen, which I have inserted now. So now if I go and trigger the pipeline, it's an incremental load now. It's not a full refresh. If, it's, if you give a full refresh, it truncates and creates. It's an incremental load. So it is running now. Now if you see only two rows have been inserted now. And if you come to the target table, and if you query the target table, we can clearly see that record with user ID 5 has been inserted and which is null. That means this is the latest record and this record has been closed as per ACD2. So ideally in all the projects which I have worked, they were using the date or a timestamp here, but Databricks does not support the date or timestamp column. So we have to go with sequence only here, but Databricks does not support the date values here. So we have to go with some numbering integer values only. That's why I have choose uh, this sequence column as uh, sequence by as uh, uh, sequence by as integer unlike the scd1 here which is date that's it guys that's how we handle cdc in delta live tables it's so simple the only thing is this comes extra we have to create a target table and then we have to apply the changes that's it and also one more thing i would like to show you is Whenever you create a notebook and whenever you create a delta live table, I mean the whenever you create an ETL pipeline So immediately in case if you want to validate either you can click here and validate or else if you go to this specific notebook Which you which this has been pointing which this delta live table has been pointing to We can even debug and everything from this notebook as well. If you click on this We can directly go to that UI Okay, or else you can just click on validate here so it, it creates the graph and it generates the logs and everything. Th these are the two ways with, uh, with which we can debug. Either we can go to the Delta Live Tables UI or from the notebook itself directly. That's it guys. Thank you so much.